views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Talk. Tonight we have a wonderful, uplifting Christmas show for you, featuring one of the borough's best youth programs, the Renaissance Youth Center. In the Bronx at 3rd Avenue and 168th Street, Renaissance has been providing young Bronxites with growth and development in music, sports, educational advancement, and most importantly, giving them a chance to a bright and productive future. In fact, the Renaissance co-founder and CEO just received the first ever Rite Aid Kid Champ Award that brought thousands of dollars to the programs. And what makes this such a good story for Christmas? Because the Renaissance Youth Center is as good an illustration that dreams can and do come true in our borough of the Bronx. Indeed they do. So please join me in welcoming back to Bronx Talk Renaissance co-founder and CEO Bervin Harris. Great to have you with us. Great to be here, Gary. And he brought one of the youngsters, <laughs> Damarly Dem yeah. Dem Alvarado, and she can tell us firsthand about being yeah. part of Renaissance. Nice to have you with us. Nice to be here. Uh, Mr. Harris, let's uh, start with you. Just for people who don't know, and I don't know where they've been, mm -hmm. let's talk about Renaissance and how it was founded, why it was founded, and some of the programs you run. Sure. Renaissance has been around for 16 years. I'm one of the founders. And we started out first, people might know us as Renaissance EMS, Education, Music, and Sports Programming. Um, but we've now rebranded about three years ago. We're called Renaissance Youth Center. And the main thing we do is a lot of music in, back into our schools. And so we currently entertain about 4,000 kids a week. We're in 26 different schools. And Gary, we were talking a little bit before the show started. When we went to school, we had woodshop home economics, electric, pottery class, music, right? music, <laughs> band classes, right? arts classes. So yeah. we don't have these things right going on in, in most of our public schools, mainly in the Bronx area. So I believe if you talk about a problem, you're obligated to offer a solution. And so part of what we do is go to these schools and we do music programming. But we're much more than that, right? So we got an amazing youth council. This, is, this young lady here is a part of. She's actually the president now of our youth council. Ah, there you go. <laughs> a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T then. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> So we got teenagers in our community who are standing up and doing some positive things like painting parks and, and we had a, a slaughterhouse across the street from our center that was out of compliance with <coughs> blood and dead carcasses and garbage cans. And these young people got together and got 8,000 signatures signed to bring this, this slaughterhouse in compliance. In addition to that, we do STEM programming. So in our site, we have 100 kids that come every day. You got to see these little kindergarten kids come in. They can do dissections, hydroponics, coding robotics and so here's what I believe right so going back to how school used to be I was excited about going to school for part of the class while I was there I got math but I didn't go for math I went for band for singing for wrestling for sports and so we try to bring some of that sheer fun back into our programming while kids are learning everyone doesn't learn by paging through a book some of us got to blow up something <laughs> when you listen, I've been sitting in this chair, as we were talking about before, for a pretty long time. Mm. Um, maybe the, the single most consistent complaint that I've heard from Bronxites and from parents is, what are my kids doing after school? They're not getting enough enrichment. We've got to build up our community centers. You've been able to do this, mm. and, and I know as you were checking off the things you do, music and sports and arts yeah, and, yeah. and STEM and uh, youth council, people were checking the box. Yes, we like this, we like this, we like this. Um, how are you able to do this? Is, is it a financial issue? Or, is, I mean, the commitment clearly is there, but how are you able to, mm -hmm. I would say the wrong word, get away with this <laughs> right. in, 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 a, in what is a difficult climate to run these kinds yes. of programs? Yes, very difficult climate. So even something as simplistic as sports. 
And so for those of us who want to play basketball, soccer, or baseball, I challenge anyone out there who's listening, Google uh, uh, grants for basketball and see what you find. You will find nothing. You know, Google grants for baseball and soccer, you will probably find All the nothing. things that everybody the wants to do. things that you want for music, you will right. find very little. So yes, to answer your question, it makes it extremely difficult, but we become professional beggars. So before I leave here tonight, I'm gonna pat your pockets <laughs> down. Right? So that is how we run the organization. And we're like, we're, we're proof in the pudding. So we do a lot of shows, a lot of performances. MWAM, the Music with a Message Band, which is a group that performed when we were here last with you. That was four years ago four here years on ago. this program, that's right. That group does about 100 shows a year. 100 shows 100 a year. 100 shows that a year. Is a, that is a, a, a more extensive calendar than some of the <laughs> biggest professional You're right. musicians. You're right. No question about it. Not only that, so I was, a perform I was a performer. I was an artist on Capitol Records, and I'm going to tell you this. The shows that these young people do, I wish I could have gotten those venues. We, we, this is a, we're doing a Yankee Stadium this week. Wow. This will be our third time doing Yankee Stadium this year. Wow. Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center. Oh, the little places. You play all the <laughs> all little the small sides. small spots, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I, I really want to bring uh, Damara Lee Absolutely. into the um, dialogue, but one last question. Do you start them from scratch? Or do you need, like, like a parent who's watching right now will say, well, wait a minute, how am I going to get my, I want my kid to be involved. Do, do they start from scratch and then be, because they become so accomplished, or do you take in youngsters who have some ability before they come right. in? We call it recreational music, Gary. So we bring kids in at the age of three. Mm -hmm. And so this young lady right here, she's probably been with us for six, seven, five, six, seven, eight years. Oh, almost five years. About, about, about five years. So some of them have been here 10, 12 years, right? right? So they, they grow and they mature and right. then they get a chance to travel and do the things we wow. do. Fantastic. Well, <laughs> nice to have you with us. It, it, in, in five years, so you're a college student. We can say she's a Lehman College student, yeah. a proud Lehman College <laughs> student. Um, can we talk about what you were and what you are now as a result of having gone through these, uh, been part of these programs? Oh, yes, of course. Okay, so I've been with the Renaissance for about, I want to say, almost five years now. Right. I came in wanting to do vocal classes and piano classes. Because you had an interest in music. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I have to editorialize. How <laughs> crazy is it that she can't go to her own school and do that? It's fine, she yeah. goes to Renaissance yeah. and we accept yeah. that, but uh, that's my editorial comment. I hope people are listening. I hope so. That's how we're going to build up young people and make them all better. But anyway, go ahead, I'm so sorry. Um, so, yeah, I, I did a couple of classes for about a year or so, and then Mr. Harris introduced me to the MWAM band. So um, I did auditions that's in the following That's music spring. with a message. Yes, music with a okay. message. And so, I did auditions in the following, in the springtime, and I got in and I've been with them ever since. What, why has it been a good program for you? Um, it's helped me uh, academically, personally, socially. Um, it's just made me a better person in general. Like Before I went to Renaissance, I was quiet, withdrawn. I didn't like really to talk to anybody, go anywhere, and I had nowhere to go. So I loved being um, involved in music and having a chance to express how I feel artistically, but I didn't have anywhere to do it. You don't come across as a very shy person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so it's really it's brought you out. It's yes, changed you. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, what's been the best part of, of it? Now, we have a video, a couple of videos, actually, we're going to show um, where uh, Damara Lee is <coughs> in it. And you'll be able to see, uh, you know, she talks in, in depth about some of this. But what what has it been? What is it that got you to be a, a more mature and, and help you grow and develop better? Uh, it was the fact that there was always room for growth, and they th this program doesn't stop until you reach your full potential. And even then, they say, you know, there's always time to grow. And so when I first started, I felt like, you know, okay, I can, I can, I can sing, I can play piano, I can do just this a, a and b but i want to do more and this program didn't um just provide that for me they provided uh, a second home they provided um support and it became more than just you know music and it became more than just um su uh, support in terms of academics this pretty much became like my second family and it becomes to the point where it's like Harris says, once you come in and drink the Kool-Aid, you know, you're a part of the family forever. That's good. You know, um, we've done so many different types of shows. We talk to criminal justice professionals and we talk about the nature of gangs mm -hmm. and the element, they say, that attracts young people, because you said I had no place to go. Mm -hmm. The element that attracts young people to gangs is they are searching for a family. Yes. And they don't find one 
they find one uh, that happens to do all the wrong things. Right. You know this like you know your own name. Absolutely. This is what, what you try to create. We're going to show this video. I want to ask you one question just before we do that. In the video, you're going to see some of your colleagues and some of the young people talking about how much you follow up with individual youngsters. Talk to me about why you do that, how you do that, and what the effect of that is to help young people right. like Damara Lee grow and develop. Absolutely. When we first started out, Gary, it wasn't about really the basketball or even the music to see kids become these amazing NBA ball players or well, make nice. records and stuff. <laughs> it would be very nice, absolutely. It, it's not happening, I'm sorry. And, and, many of them have, <laughs> and many of them have gone pretty far. But that being said, we wanted to see kids become law-abiding citizens with something positive for society. And how do we do that? We nurture you. We're there for you. Mm -hmm. So when she talked about helping her academically, you can't be in the band unless you bring me in your weekly monitor. So every week by her school, she has to get signed, her behavior, her test scores. Attendance, I assume. Everything. Mm -hmm. Gotta be in school. And she'll tell you, if she All doesn't right. do a great job, she can't be in it. And I visit schools mm -hmm. to make sure that they're on top wow. of the game. Wow. I, I, listen, my hat's off. I'm not wearing a hat, but it would be <laughs> off to everything you do. Now, I, I watched this video, and we have um, uh, another one we're going to show by the end of the show. Uh, I'm going to introduce it. I'm not letting you introduce it. <laughs> this is going to tell you everything you want to know, and if, 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 if it's Christmas, if it's the holiday, you are going to find out that dreams do come true because places like this exist in the Bronx, and there are opportunities for your kids and my kids and their kids, and when she grows up, her kids. Yeah. And uh, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the Renaissance Youth Center. Enjoy. I know you will. The Renaissance Youth Center has made me see my future more clearly. Renaissance taught me I could dream big and be bigger. We're all one big family. Let me help this dude out because I see where he's going and I see where he can be. You're going to find your way onto a better path. There was a sign when I first came here that says the street ends here. It took me a while to come through the Renaissance and I haven't left. I can mess up and cry and break down and not be okay. And it's okay. It's okay. The Youth Council really brought to light that teens really can have a voice in this community. But well, Mr. Harris really wants nothing but the best for you. They don't accept nothing less than your best. Being a student of Renaissance means growing into the amazing person that they saw in you first. And they really taught me how to lead and not follow behind other people. This is a place that really has changed my life. Everyone deserves an opportunity to experience what we experience at Renaissance. I've never been to a program like this before. Welcome to RYC Renaissance Youth Center. My name is Bourbon Harris, CEO and number one cheerleader of RYC Kids. RYC currently services over 4,000 young people a week through our mission to maximize the potential to become law-abiding citizens with something positive to offer society. I like to say we hook them and cook them. We lure them in with our attractive programs, then we cook them with academics, social development, vital tools needed to end poverty. A large part of our program is performing arts classes. We call it recreational music. We currently offer satellite music education to 21 schools, several community-based organizations, Department of Probation, and detention centers through what we call our Music on Wheels program. We currently have five locations for after-school programming where we offer tutoring, SAT prep, literacy through the performing arts, and STEM. Sports programs have always been a part of RYC Foundation. One of the differences that I think differentiates us from other programs is the fact that we have a holistic approach of staying behind a child. So it's not just about basketball, it's also about what is happening at home, what is happening in the school. So we monitor our kids from a social development point to academic point, taking them to college, following up with our weekly monitors that we do. And they come in, they think it's one thing, they're going to learn how to shoot a hoop, but then the real thing is we're trying to teach them how to you know, score a three-pointer in life. Our amazing youth council called Youth in Power, where we partner with NYPD, Parks Department, community boards, and precincts, this group, ages 13 to 24, is helping to foster change in the community and has appeared in local and major news outlets. And then there's MWAM, Music with a Message, our windows to the world. This talented group of kids perform close to 100 shows a year. 
everything from street celebrations, Yankee Stadium, Carnegie Hall, Great Adventure, to most recent, Lincoln Center. Before I came here, I was really shy. I didn't really know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to do this, but now I can have a conversation with people. I can socialize and I could network a little bit better. In the past, I've I had so many incidents with police officers. My experience with Renaissance dealing with police officers has really kind of opened up my mind and made it not so one-sided anymore. Honestly, I can say I have relationships with some police officers. Going to the community board meetings with um, youth councils or the precinct meetings, I actually want to go in and see what the information they have for us so I can bring back to the youth. Youth Council gives a platform to young adults in the in the community so that they can voice their opinions about what's going on in their community. We can have this connection and this partnership with not only the youth, but everyone else in the community, whether it's like you're from the east side of the Bronx or the west, north, south, it doesn't matter. We are all one big family. This is a place where you can be after school doing like either music, basketball, anything. It, it's a place for you to like stay away from the violence and gangs and stuff like that. Like you can come here and they will help you for the, for the long run. I'm also a member of the m Wan band, um, a bass player with them. We went to um, the Rite Aid convention and I'm sitting in the back of the, of, the, um, of the band talking to Carlos. Carlos, which I know from nowhere, but he's mad cool. <laughs> and we're talking about, yeah, 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 you know, these people, they really care, this and that. Out of nowhere, I just start tearing and me, I'm confused and I'm scared. I think I was hearing because I really never felt that emotion before. So I really didn't know how to handle it. My relationship with Mr. Harris is sometimes professional and sometimes it's a friendship. I see him as a mentor and somebody I can learn off of and somebody that could also steer me in the right direction if I go in the wrong direction. Mr. Q, has, he's changed my life because he's like, like every other coach. He checks up on me, calls my mom, asks her how I'm doing at home academically, and he comes to my school randomly out of nowhere just to check up on how I'm doing. You really can call this home, because I, I really do. I call this my second home because nine times out of ten, whenever somebody asks me where I'm going, it's always Renaissance. <laughs> always. <laughs> Renaissance is more than just music. It's more than just sports. It's more than just a day job. Renaissance is a family, and I don't know what I would do without Renaissance. Oh, you had me crying already, Yo, man. Me cry. I didn't want to cry, bro. Yo, bro. Good job. All right, there they are. There, there it is. As I, as I told them before, we don't even need you. Show the video. <laughs> you got the whole idea. Uh, it's it just fantastic, and that really explains, I think, very well what you do. Um, we were talking during the break about, because um, Rite Aid uh, paid for that, and you have yeah. other corporate sponsors. Talk to me about, um, you talked about being a professional beggar, about uh, corporate sponsorship and the importance of that and, and their association with you. Yeah. We do have some. It's tough. You know, Target comes across, Rite Aid Foundation, Coach Bags, which is now called um, Tapestry. Coach oh. rebranded. Mm -hmm. um, it's very tough reaching out to corporations, but when, we, when they get a chance to see and be a part of the program, there are corporations that do give. And so, you know, if you're out there and you're watching. Oh, give. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. But you know, you know what I think is interesting? So not only do they have it because they have the resources and Rite Aid and congratulations on the award you got yeah. and uh, much deserved, obviously, and Sitco is another yeah. organization that gives generously. I think you and, and you, of course, 
help transform them a little bit to say, wait a minute, yeah. if we put a little resource into something and compared to what they have, it's really a little bit, a little resource, it can, it can really uh, make a difference. Um, you were talking about some of the people in the video. Talk to me about some of the other youngsters who are there with you. Um, and what do you see in them? And, and talk a little bit about transformations that you've seen. Okay, so... Um, the you don't have to name names. Yeah. It would be nice the, the, Well, the people in the video, they're also a part of our Music with a Message. And so, again, we're kind of like a close-knit family. We do shows together. We do sleepovers. We do a whole bunch of things together. So, like, we kind of, you know, grow into each other's lives, whether we like it or not. And... Um, it's fascinating. They, yeah. They're just... They, they, we come from different backgrounds. So there are so many kids who walk through the center day in, day out, every Saturday, every weekend, even after school programs that I meet. And one thing we all have in common is that we have that passion and that drive to do what we're here well, for. What, why? Do you, is that a bad question, a hard question to answer? I why, think, why do you have that drive? I think it's the fact that they see other people who've been successful in doing what they want to do. Why can't I do the same thing? Exactly, yes. Yeah. And so when we have yeah. a program like Renaissance who provides the opportunity to do so, we have that much more of a drive to do it. Mm -hmm. Where it's like it's possible for us to do that. You know, this, this, there's so much that goes on with youngsters and especially young, young people of color and that people make assumptions about them. They think they don't care. They think they're unlawful. They think yeah. they can't learn. I mean, you know, it, it's, all, it's all ridiculous stuff. Um, and, and the bottom line is what you said. You can be anything you want to be, but it's very difficult if you don't have somebody like Mr. Harris or other people, you know, mentoring you. I want to talk about this youth council, right, yes. uh, which you are the president of, and, and um, Mr. Harris talked mm -hmm. about uh, uh, <coughs> some of the projects you do. Why would you participate in something like that? What is the value of that for you and the other young people? Uh, for me, the value is a chance to have my voice heard. And when I say my voice heard, not only in like, you know, my own borough, but eventually like nationally for youth mm -hmm. or um, people who don't have a voice. B so. Bourbon, we're all going to be working for her one day. <laughs> <laughs> no question. And it's okay. It's fine with me. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. No problem. Um, so it's, youth council is basically um, a way where youth can be heard. So if we have... Uh, a problem in the community, we can address it, and whether it's in the community board or a precinct meeting or... And give me an example. Now, he mentioned this slaughterhouse thing, but is there... What, what are you working on now, or what, what's a project that you folks are talking about? Um, right now, we're actually in the process of picking our projects. We uh -huh. had... Um, we have a very large group of uh, people who come in for youth council meetings, and we all addressed that we had different problems we wanted to um, take care of and, you know, make sure that we were heard. So we had uh, a list of things. For example, we had... Um, a, Sex trafficking. Yes, yeah, sex trafficking, homelessness. Wow. Um, we had uh, people beating up on senior citizens. Um, I'll tell you, you know, I, I had talked uh, with Mr. Harris about coming in myself and talking about some of the things that I know about, about media and other things. Mm -hmm. I think I want to sit in on the youth council, if you don't mind, <laughs> because yes, I'd like to know it. what you guys are thinking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And, and maybe, of course, if I can provide some resource, but mm -hmm. it, it would help me to learn what, what is important to, right. to young people. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, now we're really, if we haven't had fun yet, we're really going to have some fun. Uh, we have a video to show. Um, the last time, as, as uh, Bourbon mentioned, um, they were here. We had them in the studio. This time we have this video. Now, this was, I think, two years ago at the Rite Aid uh, convention right. or something. Yeah. So if you want to introduce it, you who are watching this show are going to love seeing these kids because they are for real. But mm -hmm. do you want to introduce We're it? We're in Washington, D.C. at the Rite Aid Foundation's dinner, performing in front of 10,000 individuals where Rite Aid gave us a van and some money. Uh, good for Rite Aid, and it <laughs> makes me want to go in there and, and you know, buy some raisinets or something. <laughs> but but um, the thing that drives me, these kids can sing and play, yeah. and these yeah. are our Bronx kids enjoy. Mm. Please enjoy an encore of the Renaissance Youth Center's Music with a Message Band. Come on out, guys. All right, here we go. This song right here is called Lovely Day. How many of you guys want a van today? Am I the only one?
Ladies and gentlemen, if we had a studio, even if you were in the room, absolutely yeah. tremendous. You were just, we, we don't have a lot of time. You were mentioning to me that some of these kids are now out there, these right? These kids are all over the world. I'm looking at one young lady, she's singing background for Harry Carnegie. One of the, the drummer, he's like one of the, the, the drum off for Guitar Center. These guys are everywhere. Wow. Doing amazing stuff. Yeah. Give me a pitch for other young people who are watching right now. Why should they look up the Renaissance Youth Center? That's the, yeah, okay. All right, so um, <laughs> um, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, and it'll change your life for the better, and you can be anything you want to be through this program as much as you want to be. Mm -hmm. the, the contact info, how do they find you? www.renaissanceyouth.org, renaissanceyouth.org, 718-450-3466. 4503466. You do go to that website. It says right there, parents and children and, and donors, and, and you want to, want to do that. Hey, guys, the best. <laughs> happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. All the best. You are making the Bronx what it is. And if you have further questions or comments on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, send us an email at bronxtalk at bronxnet.org. You can send a tweet at Bronx Talk. Or you post them on our Facebook page and we read them on the air during a future edition of our program. Please, if you have interest in Renaissance Youth Center, do it. Don't hesitate. Um, you can check out our archives at bronxnet.org. You can find Bronx Talk by following the watch menu on the nice new Bronxnet website. Next week for New Year's, we'll have another special holiday show. We will visit with one of our favorite guests. Joe Raskin from Wandering New York will be here to show some of his wonderful photos of Bronx buildings, Bronx subways, and Bronx neighborhoods. Thanks to our producer, Lindsay, who does a great job all year long, to William, who also does a great job, to the cast of thousands. We'll see you next week. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, good night.